<laughs> so we we are talking about uh, this retreat we're going to put on uh, mid November, yeah. and you know, like we it's it's not like us to like you know plan details and and um, and we don't yet know you know who, exactly who's who's going. But I wanted to talk to you just like what what are the what are we trying to do here? Uh, what's our vision for it? Why are we doing it? Just so that people who are listening who might be interested can get a sense of if it's for them. Um, you know, I know every, anyone who comes will probably know us or at least know one of us pretty well. Like this is there's, there's a lot of trust that has to be involved. But just in terms of like, you know, is this for me? Like what what are, what are your thoughts? Like what when we started talking about it, what got you excited? Yeah, well, we've talked so much and we've talked about it a lot about how it took a community. It took it took camp trips. It took these things for me to be that 420 pound person. It took incubating those ideas and thoughts and feelings through communal activity, like going to the camp or going to a football game, you know, or going to the gym together. Like, and so to me, this answers because it's very what we do is um is really different in out in the real world compared to what other folks do so to incubate these ideas that we're about the 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 movement the mindset you know the menu all of those things that that we talk about this is just a way for me to copycat or us to copycat what we now realize was the method to help me get to big and fat and unhealthy we're just using that very successful model to to do something different on purpose. I think that it is very akin to going to the camp together as a family, um, going to a football game, making a trip together. Like in so many ways, my running has done that just de facto in my life to, to have these excursions where it's a group of us and we get together and we share ideas and we share food. It's not meant to be like a, like some sort of a retreat, but it is de facto a way for me to be around my plant-based ultra run. Even if they're not all plant-based, they're still, we still have so many overlapping desires in life that it's cool to be in the same space and in a strange location, kind of us against the world, even though it's not mentality it feels good. There's a certain pod mentality to that. There's a certain, like, I don't know, maybe this will turn some people off, but it's like a, like a, a ride or die sort of gang <laughs> mentality of let's come together and be together on purpose. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, when, you know, when you say ride or die, what I'm hearing in my head, you know, is, um, is essentially, the, you know, a, a tribe that we choose to belong to and you know want to put our muscle for not just for ourselves it's not like people are coming to this like what am i going to get for myself but i mean that's why people would sign up but once you get there it's like what can we do for each other because uh, we don't we very few of us have tribes that where everyone you know it's like drake's woes right is you know <laughs> working on excellence like people who are working on the same things we're working on and to create that for two and a half days feels very precious to me Yes, exactly. And who knows? We, I mean, there, there's this beautiful thing that I've learned about in my journey called serendipity. And there's all sorts of serendipity is going to happen when you put like minded people together in a place geographically. I mean, we could be from the all over the place. But that meeting of the minds in person, it does something. It changes you. It grows you. You'll be forever changed for having met people in person. That's that. That's that's and, and you know that's echoes of Bam Bam taking me to the camp. Like there was this mixture of people who know what to do at the camp and people who are newbies. And it feels like this could fr this just looking at who's interested in coming to this. Um, and who I, what I assume the makeup might look like is there'll be that will run that gamut as well in, in this. And so being able to just have that range of, of, of individuals together, there's so much just learning done through osmosis, just being in the same space with one another without having to sit down and go, okay, get your pencil now. 
Memorize mm. these five things? No. Let's just be together and have a good time and move and eat and live and love and, and, and you know, take something who knows what with us back into the real world. Right. So this, I mean, one thing we agree upon is like we're, you know, we're not going to have like a 30, 39 line agenda. No. Of like, you know, 1015 to 1027, we're all going to do this. Right. That's not how that's not how either of us rolls. Um, yeah. Nor, no. nor is it, you know, like we're not looking to simulate an experience. Right. Or, or even to to predetermine what that experience is going to be. Right. So this is this is this is more like like our lives, right? That they're sort of improvisational and organic. And this is kind of this is kind of a, a chance to practice that in a really safe, nurturing environment. Yeah, with friends that you I mean, right, exactly. Exactly. That dynamic is very powerful in incubating ideas. I know that firsthand because of the ideas that were incubated in my life at deer camps and fishing camps. It's a very powerful tool to get together in, in some rural location and share ideas and food. Right. And one thing you mentioned was that we, we could have people who are more beginners, more newbies on this journey and people who are more experienced. But you know, we're not looking for something like this is the curriculum, like this isn't like third grade or you know, blue belt class where where we need a certain type of person that there's something tremendous to be gained by being the most experienced person in a group, right? You can you kind of can reinforce your identity in a really powerful way as Oh, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. Look at me. I have something to offer too. Q and a sessions are better or bet are good for everyone. The question asker and the question answer and everyone is honing what it is thereafter. And so like that, if you've ever I know I've heard like after after Dr. Michael Greger or someone might speak and you're like, damn, I wish that Q&A had lasted longer. Well, this we're not on his level. But if you ever want, like imagine an entire weekend of a QA and a session, you know, that and that's what I would love for it to be more conversational. Yeah, well, Josh, you said this. Well, what about this? Well, that's funny. You might mention that, you know, and you can have these these, you know, very situational, conversational things happen in an organic way and you'll learn something from it more than you would ever learn something from a, from an outlined, uh, you know, bullet, bulleted mm -hmm. list. Yeah. And also that it's not it's not just going to be conversation, but lots of doing. Of course. Right. So like I, I remember um, when I first was introduced to kind of healthy eating by Peter Bregman, he was saying, oh, well, you know, what I have for lunch when I'm home is I'll steam some greens and then I'll steam like I'll cut a sweet potato into pieces and steam it and have it with some hummus. And I didn't do that because like it was still theoretical. Then I went to his place for lunch and, and he did it and I was there watching him do it. I'm like, oh, OK. And like from that day, it was like, OK, I can do this. There's so, it was, it was so weird to be, you know, a teacher to think that the cognitive intellectual is so important. And yet what really was important was to be in the same room with him as he did it. Yeah, no, exactly. You, it really drives home how simple it is when you see someone execute. And you're like, oh, I could do that, too. It sounds so much more complicated when you just try to try to articulate the actions necessary to a person with words. Right. I'm, I'm thinking of like like what are the you know, the, the U.S. Army manual for how to tie your shoes? Like I, pr I probably couldn't do it. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Right. Um, and also and also we're looking for, you know, for opportunities for people to challenge themselves and to be challenged and for mm -hmm. us to be challenged. So it's not you know, it's not just going to be like, hey, let's just get away and just have a totally, you know, passive experience just hanging out. Right. Right. No, we talk a lot about being able to like, you know, one of the. One of the biggest things that people don't do that we should do is start exactly where we are. Um, and so I would love for this to be an opportunity for people to understand what that means in real time in person. Um, I think oftentimes we kind of uh, intellectually decide where we should start. I should be this fast or I should be able to do this. And what it's really about is being more objective and 
getting out in the world and putting out an effort to see exactly where we are. Let that be where we are. It can be our starting point as we meet together and we leave from that starting point in an effort to grow that thing we've discovered, you know, our place, our beginning point in the continuum by going on longer walks than we thought we could or shorter walks than we thought we could. Whatever it is, it's an opportunity to, to put that little two word, that little two letter word into action, do, you know. And it's just more palatable with friends, I think, and especially in person. Yeah, that, that idea that starting where you are is so important, not only because it's the only place you can start, but when we when we try to start somewhere else, what we're really saying is where I am now is not OK. And when we start with an energy of something's not OK, we almost never make progress. Yeah. Yeah. And that this will be a good way to kind of start that very elegant dance, that very intricate dance of learning how to be where you are, yet massage the forward edge of that to try to inhibit some growth, to try to create something new. We don't we're not looking for a there. There's no there to find, you know, um, and that's kind of what we want to do is just edge that ball ever so gently forward, yet persistently and consistently. It's not about falling in love with where I am. I'm 350 and I love me. It's not really that. That's 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 it's about understanding where we are and making that 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 self love fueled desire to constantly push the ball forward. Um, that's where I would like to see people be. And that's what I think we can do together as a community, as a group of folks. We exhibit that ourselves and expect it from others. And this is a good place to kind of kick all of that that off, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. One, one more thing. We're inviting people to come as individuals or as couples. And by mm -hmm. couples, we just mean you're willing to share a queen size bed. We're not going to like no no questions asked. Just yes. it's just just a. But for people who, who are thinking about like, you know, like so our significant others are very often a big deal in our change efforts, either positively, neutrally or negatively. What are your thoughts about, you know, people coming, bringing someone new who's not like in this lifestyle, who doesn't necessarily know us? Like, what do you think that would be like? No, I think it would be I think it would be very useful. Just that that component we talked about earlier of the that that osmosis, learning through osmosis. When you're in the thing and immersed in it, you're not being told anything. I think that sometimes being told something by your significant other makes you want to do the exact opposite. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. Um, Theoretically, so I, though. Yeah, I think that sort of the gravity of the group may mm -hmm. help move the ball, may help move, move that person in some way. This is not to we're not trying to convert significant others here or anything like that. But we would like to educate people on why it is we do what we're doing. And um, and I think bringing a significant other along for that ride would probably go a long ways towards figuring out how to coexist, even if you don't ever come to a 100 percent agreement on what we should eat at Thanksgiving. Gotcha. Great. Any other thoughts uh, on the on the retreat for folks? Anything you're excited about? I'm excited. I like being in person with people. That's my life. That's mm -hmm. what that reminds. That my Bam Bam didn't do Zoom calls and Facebook. Right. I watched him interact socially in person and shake hands. And you know, in our case, we fried fish and we and we made drinks for people and tried to get drunk, try to see who could get the drunkest and take them out fishing late at night. And we would do these fun things to sort of knit our little group together. Uh, I enjoy that dynamic um, in my life. I think it's really useful. I'll still do that type of thing when we go to ultra marathons or we go to races or we go to group runs or what we would call fat ass runs where we just kind of get together and go do long runs that, so I have that in my life and I really feel like being able to offer that to other people to help bring them into the fold, not only to help me and you figure out a way to actually um, keep doing this going forward, 
and be of use and service to 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 the world at large, but also be able to make a living doing it. I think this scratches like a lot of the itches. And it's just a way for me to do what I feel like I'm already really good at, interacting with people, being friends with people, telling jokes. Plus, you're a little bit more willing to be risky in the conversation when it's in person and it's not being recorded and it's not in a Facebook comment. And sometimes those those (laughs) risky conversations are useful, you know. So I look forward to being in three dimensions with folks. I think it's a fun thing. At least in my mind, I could see us doing these types of things in Grand Isle, Louisiana or Leadville, Colorado. So to be part of this very first seedling of an idea, I'd be, you know, I'm, I'm forever grateful for anyone who, who takes us up on this offer for what it, you know, what it, what it might mean going forward. Um, so... I'm super excited for what this could potentially mean for me and you as buddies, as friends, as people who like to meet new people. Um, and and uh, and I just can't wait to get started. I mean, the weather's going to be cooler by then. You know, the running will be easier. Um, that's I'm getting text messages. I'm so sorry. Um, the, the running will be a little smoother and easier, maybe even a little too cold for some of us, from some of us down in South, for some of us from South Louisiana, but all of those things, those uncalculable, those incalculable, many little micro moments that you have when you're in a space with people, that's what I'm excited about. Not even about the weight loss or teaching people about a plant-based diet or, or, or um, any of those technical things. I, I, I really like making connections and being friends with people. And that's what, I, that's what I'm excited about. It's a, I, it looks like and feels like a camp trip on the calendar to me. And, and it's got me kind of jacked up. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks. I think this is, this is a wrap. We'll put that out there and uh, see who's interested. Let's go, baby. All right.